I'm Adriana Mitchell, this is Claire Raftery, and we're here to represent the Citizen Kate experiment. In 2012, we narrowly avoided a huge solar storm, depicted here, and if it had hit the Earth, it would have cost the US alone over $2 trillion in damages. To this day, we struggle to accurately predict space weather due to gaps in observation coverage. The Citizen Kate experiment will help fill these gaps and improve our understanding of the solar wind by harnessing the power of citizen scientists to observe and record the total solar eclipse. The images from the 68 Kate sites will be composed into a continuous 90-minute data set. Well, why is this data set important? The solar atmosphere can be observed from both ground and space-based instruments, but neither do a great job of studying the lower layers of the solar corona. However, during a total solar eclipse, the moon's shadow opens up a window so that we can observe this region in detail. And as you can see, the Kate data fits well within this window. The real strength of the Kate images is that for the first time, they will reveal long-term high spatial and temporal resolution observations of the lower corona. So what's there to see with this data? When you use your thumb to block a lamp, light from the lamp scatters off of dust in the room. This is the exact same thing that happens during a total solar eclipse when, sunlight, when the moon blocks the sun and sunlight scatters off of the solar atmosphere. The fast solar wind is accelerating away from the sun, but we don't know how. When you merge onto the highway in your car, you push, physically push the gas pedal to accelerate. The same thing happens to gas moving away from the sun, but we don't know what the solar equivalent of pushing the gas pedal is. But why should you care about any of this? We're used to hearing that solar storms have a large impact on Earth, but the fast solar wind is another important factor in space weather to recognize. The fast solar wind introduces changes in the Earth's magnetic fields, which in turn induces currents in our power grid. If those currents are large enough, they could leave large sections of the country without electricity for months at a time. Our data from Kate will allow us to measure the solar wind acceleration and teach us about the processes that accelerate the solar wind. This is our purpose for obtaining our data. The Kate equipment was chosen because it met the science requirements. The equipment is able to image the solar corona up to one solar radii and is able to capture the accelerating gases at varying speeds. The setup is easily portable and will be at every Kate site across America on August 21st. And we have a setup outside if you'd like to see it. Kate had a practice run during the 2016 total Indonesian solar eclipse with five independent student-led sites, and it was a success. Here is a sample of a post-processed image from one of the sites, and this is a bit an example of the data that we will return from the summer. The students who traveled to Indonesia returned and have since held 11 training workshops to train our 68 Kate sites. Our volunteers span from young students to amateur astronomers, and they've been trained extensively on how to use equipment and have been practicing for months to produce professional level images. Here are some example images from last week of the huge solar sunspot that was visible with the human eye. Site 11 in Idaho did a particularly good job, and we've highlighted their data here. The 2017 solar eclipse offers a unique opportunity to chase the eclipse across the country in a relay race of sorts. As the moon's shadow passes from the horizon of one site over to the next site, the next observer is ready to start their observations. With thanks to a variety of funders, uh, the volunteers are going to be able to keep the equipment that they're using for the 2017 eclipse. We're hoping that this will spawn a legacy of nationwide astronomy uh, studies that will go on long after the eclipse is finished. This is especially relevant since more than half of our sites are at educational institutes. The project has also been led by seven fine undergraduate students with the support of PI Matt Penn from NSO. We expect that this experience will go a long way towards helping them uh, with prosperous and su successful careers in STEM. So if you haven't already selected your, uh, your observing spot, you can use our interactive eclipse map. By clicking anywhere on the map, it will tell you the important eclipse times in local time, so you don't have to worry about converting from universal time. We've also put together a series of eclipse science webcasts. So if you're interested in understanding why you're seeing what you're seeing or what it is that you're seeing, these can be your guide. They're geared towards the general public, and they feature some, really, uh, some of the more interesting things that you'll see on eclipse day. So what's next for solar astronomy? Uh, NSF's Daniel K. Inouye Solar Telescope will be the most powerful solar observatory once it's finished in 2020. Um, this, this observatory will provide long-term detailed observations of the solar corona and the magnetic field like we've never seen before. We would like to thank our many sponsors, including NSF, NASA, Daystar, MathWorks, Celestron, ColorMaker, and others, and our PI Matt Penn, without whom this project would not have been successful. <laughs>